Hey everyone, this is Alexander, and today I would like to talk about a very heated controversial subject matter of religion and religious practices and beliefs. Some of the following content in this video may be offensive to others. It's all a matter of interpretation. As long as you're willing to keep an open mind, I'm sure it'll be bearable. Now before I begin to present the following evidence and proof, I would just like to say that the existence of a deity cannot be proven nor disproven. This is blatantly obvious. Now let's begin by asking ourselves this one profound question. What is religion? Well, by definition, religion is beliefs and worship. People's beliefs and opinions concerning the existence, nature, and worship of a deity or deities, and divine involvement with the universe and human life. Ever since the creation or thought of religion has made its mark on the earth, it has been a way and method of explaining things, an ancient method of science, describing how we exist and why we're here. Now, historically speaking, many archaeologists have discovered early traces going back hundreds and thousands of years ago by the worship of deities or a deity. With early traces of burial evidence and subtle details for the worship of a deity, many prehistorical instances, burial mounds containing goods and inanimate objects along with the deceased have been found implying a sense and belief of an afterlife. This also reflects the contemporary and popular belief of heaven and hell, the concept of an afterlife, whether it being good or bad. Now, thus implying whatever actions and decisions we make in this world or this lifetime carry on to us in the next lifetime or afterlife. Now, the next heavily significant question we need to ask ourselves is, what is the afterlife? How can it be proven to exist, or if it even exists at all? The Christianity way of saying this is, if you are good, you will go to heaven, and if you are bad, you will go to hell. But it is also expressed by many uh, worshippers of Catholicism and Christianity that as long as you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, confess all your sins, and love Jesus, you will be forgiven. So, what this means is, let's get, let's take Adolf Hitler, for example. He was a Christian, right? So, you know, maybe he's in heaven right now because he confessed all of his sins. He is forgiven by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or so to speak. Now, whether this is true or not, your guess is as good as mine, just as you can't prove or disprove a tooth fairy or Santa Claus. Just as you can't prove the existence or non-existence of a heaven or afterlife. Another issue I have with the concept of an afterlife, or religion for that matter, is that it can be used as a means of an excuse or another way out. Let's say you are just an absolutely atrocious and disgusting, despicable human being. Absolutely horrible. You are a terrible person and you have done so many atrocious crimes. Someone may just tell themselves that this is okay, as long as I confess, all is forgiven. As long as I continue onward and I die, even if I pass on in this world, there is an afterlife. I'll have a second chance. Like I said, no one really knows what happens when you die. No one really knows if there is an afterlife. So why should we take the risk? So why on earth should we take that risk? Why should we take that chance as human beings? as evolving creatures in this universe. Why should we take the chance of a false hope or a false sense of security? Now, obviously, I know this is not the case for most people, but it does happen with some unfortunate individuals. It does occur, and there's no point in denying it. Now, many people may agree or disagree in the terms of redemption or forgiveness and making mistakes, then moving forward. But all human beings are truly flawed. No one in the history of man has been perfect. No one is currently perfect as we speak right now. Which is why we need redemption in our lives. Which is why we need to prove that we're worthy of living. So as human beings, is there really any accurate or proper moral ethical way of determining whether we should punish for other fellow human beings? for their crimes against humanity. Like, let's take the Adolf Hitler model, for example. 
He was the primary catalyst for World War II. He was the reason why millions upon millions of Jews died, the reason why millions of other innocent lives were lost. So let's say there is an afterlife. He doesn't confess his sins, and he goes to hell. How long would he stay in hell? Is it justifiable that he burns for all eternity, or is it wrong? Is it morally correct, or is it morally incorrect? None of us have clear answers for any of these questions. As a matter of fact, no one has a clear answer as to what heaven, or God, or hell. No one truly gives a clear answer as to what these things are. It's just emotionally and psychologically appealing to us as human beings. Which leads me to my next discussion. The reason why people firmly believe in religion without a doubt in their heart or mind. Let's give a scenario that you grew up in a dysfunctional family and have witnessed very, very horrific things. Very traumatizing things. Religion was always there to comfort you and you would believe it. You would tell yourself that everything's going to be okay. Whenever someone close to you died, like a family or a friend, a close person to you that you loved and cherished, you'll tell yourself this. They're in heaven now. They're in a better place. They'll rest in peace. I'll see them when I die or pass on from this world. Back that up with religion being forced on our throats as children, telling us that if we don't behave, or if we don't act go good towards God, and if we don't confess all of our sins, we're going to go and burn in hell. As a child, that might sound very, very horrifying. That might sound very unappealing. So, in this case, we believe it as kids. We are forced to believe these things as children. This carries on into our adolescence and then as adults. So now what we have is a sense of fear, large, undisputable fear that you have built over the years and years. Extreme emotional and psychological attachment to these things, to the loved ones and friends that you've cherished which will lead you to be stubborn and closed-minded about your beliefs, which will lead you to not listen to anyone that questions your beliefs whatsoever, and you, of course, will not question your beliefs. People will also like to rationalize with themselves that when they die, there is an afterlife, and there is indeed a heaven. So they seek comfort and solace. They seek emotional hope and security. They have been telling themselves for years, even decades, if it's a lifetime. So it's no wonder people are so firmly stuck with religion. All throughout the history of mankind, people have claimed to have seen miracles or amazing things happen. While the ironic thing is, there is much blatant and obvious evidence as to why these scenarios happen in the first place. Throughout history, whenever human beings cannot simply explain something or as to why it happened or occurred, they will say it's a miracle. They will claim it's a miracle because it cannot be explained. Let's take inertia's law, for example. Any object at rest will stay at rest. Any object in motion will stay in motion. This is very straightforward and easy to understand. But before the years that this was explained by Isaac Newton himself, people have made... For example, let's say someone does an experiment. Someone drops an apple and an anvil at the, zet at the exact same time and moment. Before Isaac Newton could explain this, one might interpret this as a miracle because the anvil and the apple are traveling and dropping and falling at the same exact velocity and speed, even though one mass of the other is extremely large in comparison. Thus, this is considered a miracle in that time period at least. And of course, modern times, this might seem extremely far-fetched and ridiculous, but who knows, in hundreds of years from now, explanations are going to be everywhere for things we couldn't explain now. Every single scenario has a logical and scientific explanation. It's just a matter of discovering that explanation. And of course, no one will know all the answers to existence. It's simply impossible. People back up their firm belief in religion with these false, 
happenings of miracles or holy incidences, in which case can be logically and easily explained. There has been no solid evidence as to ghost, the paranormal, or the existence of a deity. That said, there is no clear definition as to what a deity or god is. So how can worship something that one does not know of? Now, the Christianity excuse for this is faith. You have to have faith. Now, faith by definition is the belief in something with the absence or lack of evidence or proof. Thus, again, appealing psychologically and emotionally to people. Because as human beings, we want to believe these things can happen. We want those of us who are displeased with our lives or our faulty accomplishments want to believe that there is much more to our existence, much more purpose, when the fact of the matter is we make our own purpose in life we create our own purpose of existing in this world. We shouldn't throw it away by giving ourselves false hope and false serenity, false futures of the afterlife, or false promises of redemption and heaven. Because we're living in the here and now, so let's quit lollygagging and beating around the bush and focus on our lives in this world, here and now in the present moment rather than fear-mongering around, worrying whether or not we'll be in heaven or not, being concerned about the afterlife, or making us feel better, and telling ourselves, and lying to ourselves, that there is an afterlife. Let's stop lying to ourselves with this ancient book of fairy tales and desert stories written by primitive man, while, in the meantime, focus on improving ourselves and making this world a better place. I also welcome you to criticize me. Please criticize me. For the love of everything that is good in this world, criticize me and tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me what is wrong about my arguments and statements. 